twist. I am an ever immortal being. I've lived for so long that I have honestly lost track. But for now, we shall get onward with our subject. The subject of tonight being death. A morbid, morbid subject, yes. But all mortals must face it one day. Maybe sooner than you expect, but eventually it shall happen. Now, many humans fear death, mainly because of the unknown. You see, humans evolved from being Neanderthals, and with the thought, the mentality, the instinct of going what is that? I have no idea. I'm going to poke it with a stick. That small fear of the unknown, which has made us grow to eventually be afraid of death. Now, death is known as of we know what occurs, what it means to die. Your heart stops, you stop breathing, you grow cold, and eventually you start to decay. Now, we do not know what occurs to the soul, as it were. Now, the soul is many, many things, but essentially boiled down. it The being of a person is all their memories, their thoughts, their experiences that they have accumulated throughout their life. Now, when you die, to some, uh, to most extent, in fact, you die totally, as in your memories and thoughts. Everything that made you, you, dies with you. Now, you share some memories with people, but for all intents and purposes, you have died because they do not share those memories from your perspective. They have not b lived your life. You may share all your memories with, uh, some memories with them. You may tell them some stories, but you do not tell them what has gone on in your life at every point. Most of this occurs when we are children. It is thought that most children, pretty much all but a small 3 to 5 percent, forget all their memories, or at least up to 98 percent of their memories, after hitting the age of six. Now, we remember the basics, you know, going to the bathroom, eating, and such, but the whole premise is that through our lives, we age, we grow up, we gain more knowledge, wisdom, and eventually we hope to die of old age, but that is the thing. There are many ways to die in this world. You cannot be afraid of death, for then you fear the very act of living. Now, I have never feared death. Not because I am immortal, but because there is no reason to fear death. Sure, you can say that, oh, it will happen, and I'm afraid of it happening, but to be afraid of it even thinking of happening, happening would make you afraid of all that is. Now, that is the underlining cause of many irrational fears, as it were. Spiders and snakes being the most common, so also clowns, the occasional falling in of heights, claustrophobia. It is not the fear of these things, per se, that make one afraid. It is the underlining cause that we do not wish to be seriously harmed, maimed, or killed by these very situations. We do not fear spiders, for spiders are. We fear spiders for the fact that some spiders are capable of killing humans. Now, we fear snakes for the same reason. 
as do falling tight spaces and such. It is not fear of, but fear for. Death is behind many fears. But as I said, to fear death is to fear the act of living. Now, to take care of this fear, you gotta, you know, prepare. Give yourself a good retirement plan. Get yourself set up for a savings account. Get yourself good credit. Get yourself a nice health care plan and life insurance. Make sure you're set up for your loved ones to know of what occurs. You know, uh, write a will, a living will. Make sure you get great legal advice. Make sure you have all things set down. Make sure you tell your family all your plans. Sure, you do not expect to die until you're at least pushing 80 or so. You wish to at least see your great-grandkids go down the aisle, perhaps. But, as we know, life doesn't work out that way. There's such things as sickness and such. Cancer, mainly. But, as I said, these things are best planned for. Make sure you're set up now so you won't fear and just live your life. Make sure you ha live your life to the fullest. Now, I'm not saying go out, spend all your money, go skydiving, go around the world, do this, do that. But plan so that maybe one day when you're old and gray and you've got a good year or two left, a good five if you're open, that you can do these things. Because life is short. Like, even the most healthiest of person only expects to live to be hopefully a hundred. But after fifty, you get to be a statistic. For women, it's one in three for a heart attack. For men, one in five. Now, that is, of course, if you don't work out or you sit on your butt all day drinking coffee, watching TV, like you haven't got had a orange juice since 83, you know, that type of stuff. But life is what the main goal is. To die a happy, peaceful death. Now, many would like to go out in their sleep and peacefully. But that's the thing. Death is unexpected. That's why you plan for it. You don't fear death. You do not go about your life avoiding death. Uh, like, very much. You drive around, you go see the sights, but in the end, death will occur. Well, death and taxes. As we've learned, taxes are more to be afraid of. Because last time I checked, you don't go to prison for dying. But you can go to prison if you don't do your taxes. But, to be all fairness and everything, death is scary, but not scary in the f fact that you should fear it. It's scary in the fact that we know all about, there is to know about death. Like, we have medical professionals that'll help us avoid death. We avoid death ourselves. We have evolved to be the top of the food chain. Now that's not to say that nothing will eat us. It's a case of we have evolved to use weapons to be easier not to be eaten. We have no natural predators because we have no natural thing that has evolved to use tools better than us. We are the alpha of the Eleusin chain only because we killed all those that came before us. Humans, or, well, Homo sapiens sapiens, 
have killed the Neanderthals. Now, you may be thinking, I thought we were the Homo sapiens. That is both correct and incorrect. We are, in fact, the Homo sapiens sapiens. But the whole differences between us are so small and indistinct that we have just lived with the whole last iteration. Now, with Neanderthals, they died out because they were far too different. Now, you may be thinking, why must we die? Well, it is a genetic trait that all those, all beings that live on Earth, at least, have. Now, a perfect cell is able to replicate indefinitely, live forever, as it were. Now, there are some species on Earth that are able to uh, retain their adolescent features, like the axolotl, a water-dwelling lizard, as it were. And there are jellyfish that are able to put their cells in a younger state. Now, that isn't to say that they are immortal in the sense that they will not die. They are capable of death. It's just that they will not die of the many ailments of old age and such. They will not get diseases that are attributed with age, such as heart disease, Alzheimer's, dementia, the things that affect us humans do affect other animals, but they must have a larger enough brain. Now, the biggest thing that that brings us into is sapiens. Sapiens is intelligence. It's us, uh, it's the ability to put two and two together, and then eventually go into algebra, the theorem, theorem and such, you know, the stuff that, oh, we'll never use this outside of school unless we're building rockets, which half the time, no one can. The old saying is, what do I look like? A rocket scientist? Implying that to be a rocket scientist is to be so smart and look so distinguished in your intelligence that you look like you have all the answers. Now, that is different from sentience. Now, many confuse these two, sapience and sentience being the same thing. Now, when you were going about thinking, oh, how do animals distinguish between themselves? That is, of course, the basis of the animals are doing a simple thought process of me, not I. The thought is me eat, me drink water, me sleep. Those are the thought process of the hive mentality, or at least the species about thinking they look like me, they look like me, but they are not me. It's the uh, one sentience is where we go to the statement I, where instead of being me am me, it is I am me. I am blank. The blank, of course, being your name. Now, your parents gave you that name, but you see yourself as being that name. I, the individual, am blank. Now, that is when we go downhill with death. You see, animals do not fear death inherently. They understand and they comprehend death, but they do not fear death, mainly because they have not become the statement of I. 
when we go into the individuals, we have the thought process of, I will die. Now, when we get to, I will die, it becomes, I don't know when I will die. And then we get to the point where we started keeping track of time. Time, of course, being a human construct. What is one hour to the sun, if not a billion years to the human? Now, that, of course, is ratio is off. If done correctly, the math puts the sun at about 20 years in its own time versus ours. We say it's at, at least 4.2 or so. Now, it's said that dog years are 7 to 1. That, of course, being dogs as well as cats and some other animals live to be 15 years old roughly so we want to have the distinction that hey maybe they live to be 95 or so but that of course is if you're going off of their time compared to ours now as such we start going for seconds minutes hours days and years that's how it all goes. And in that time, we believe, hey, let's live our lives. So we started living our lives. But that was with the ever-present thought of death. If I don't do this in this amount of time, I will die before I live my life fully. Now, we, of course... Fear life in that sense. We fear living for a long time without actually having lived. We fear dying without having done something that actually gives us a reason for death. A actual non-regrets. That's why the idea of ghosts is so fearing. It's the thought of, what if I die, and whatever energy, whatever memories I have, gets stuck as an ethereal form on the earthly plane. I regret not having lived my life so successfully, or so fully, that I get stuck here, and unable to move on. That's why we fear ghosts. That's why we are have a sense, it's death, ghosts, zombies, ghouls. We fear anything that reminds us of our mortality, for so we fear that our mortality is what makes us unable to live. We fear life, for we fear death, and we fear death because we know that the statement, I will die, is one that we make at one time, and we remind ourselves of it. Every single second of every single day that we live, we give ourselves a chance to go, I will die, but because of that, we are able to give ourselves uh, every other second, every other minute, the thought, I will live, and that is what we must do. We must live, get old, maybe have a family, kids, maybe not kids, it's up to you, but just be plan prepared, plan for it. As I said, put money in the bank, get yourself set for retirement, get a good credit, get a plan for yourself. For both medical and life insurance. Now I'm not saying go crazy. On the life insurance. Just a $20,000. Is enough. Because that should easily get this funeral. In a good three or four years. For your loved one. Or loved ones. To easily set up. Themselves. For a good life. Not an extravagant life. 
but a life where they will know that you have passed, but with lo care and loving towards them, that you did not ever lose any of that love. Now there are those that are afraid of dying with their family hating them or not knowing they love them. I personally never have said the words, I love you to my family. Not because I do not want to, but because any person, any being I have said those words to has disappeared or died. The moment I've shown my positive affection and made it known to them that I feel affection for them, whether it be as family, friends, or even a love interest, I have lost them. But it is still known that I have affection for them. They know my policy. They understand it but for you this may not work so take the opportunity say I love you every time you say hi to them every time you say goodbye to them I don't care how angry you left them at I don't care if you just broke it off with them I don't care if you're divorcing them Make sure that your last words to them, even if you're leaving forever and never playing talk to them again, always say those words. Always say, I love you. Not because you expect them to die or yourself, but because even if there is anger, even if there is hate or loathing, Whatever it may be, they should know that there was always something there. Even if it's gone, even if it's fizzled out, at least make sure they know something was there. And that even if you are not together anymore, or if you know you will be back, that they had a place in your heart. And that is all that matters, because death is not scary. Death is not to be worried about, because death is the last sleep. But make sure that you go to that sleep peacefully, because death is not merciful, but it is not with prejudice or bias. Death occurs to everyone. And that is the simple truth. To be afraid of death is to be ignorant. And to be ignorant may be to know bliss. But how much bliss do you feel if there is fear in the background of it? Because paranoia is scary in the basis of life. Do not be pure paranoid of living. Do not be pure paranoid of dying. Just be. Live for the moment. Smile if you wish to smile. Laugh if you wish to laugh. Drink, but not with excess. Because being killed by being ignorant or stupid for drinking too excessively or driving while drunk or any other thing where you could easily t step back, take a few seconds to think and go, yeah, no, that's a stupid idea. Because dying is not something to be ashamed of, but to die for being a dumbass is because many people will all say 
you are a dumbass for dying in that way. And that is it. That is how it is. I shall return another night. But for this, I bid adieu. Have a good one. And I cordially await for you all to hear my next brooding in Blood Hollow. This is a blend blood. Signing off. Good night.